You now play fast forward. So you ready? Okay. Yeah. All right, fast forward is when we, we, we shoot questions at you. You answer them any way you want to, all okay. right? So the first thing is uh, one thing you wish everyone knew about Ben without you ever having to say it. Uh, about me? Yeah. Um, uh, unless it's another Ben we don't know about here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think that's me for sure. Yeah. Uh, I think that the one thing that people have to know about me is that uh, I, I'm probably too transparent. Like when, when you hear something I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it's the honest, raw truth. Yeah. And it may not always feel great to hear that in situations, or you might question like, why would he say that? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just an overshare. Mm -hmm. I'm very public about uh, my life. And that if I'm telling you something, mm -hmm. it's the truth. Yeah. And, and and you can take that information, do with it what you please. But I feel like when people meet me at first, and now that I'm a public figure, like, people know me for that. Mm -hmm. But when people know me, they, they don't know what to think about me. Cause right. they're like, what, what is this guy's deal? You and know? that's why I ask a question because a lot of times people uh, conceptualize what they know about you based on what they see on the internet, right? We call it meme culture. Exactly, right? Yeah. So they, they meet you online and then they meet you in person, but it's like, I need, actually need you to know this before you approach me. You yeah, it, I mean? exactly. And the other thing would be, always come and approach me. Mm -hmm. If you see me in public, come talk to me. Yeah. Like I, I love to talk to people in public at the airport or at mm -hmm. Target or at the ball field. And, and people are like, oh, you know, you might be doing family time. Mm -hmm. Well, without you watching my channel, my family doesn't have what we have. Right, right. And so- I'm glad you, man, it, it's so many people in the public eye that don't understand that. Yeah. Like the fans make you- They're thrive. everything. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. All right, that's beautiful, man. Number two, you could have uh, any four guests, right? on your show and you guys are doing a tour right this is kind of a, a simple way to answer this but you're also shooting a reality show okay so who do you pick to come with you you have four other people four other people um okay so i'm gonna go with first satoshi nakamoto okay that's creator of bitcoin right we don't even know if he's alive we don't but hey he's got to come with me mm -hmm. uh i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna probably say next this is a tough question oh, i'm sorry this is a hard question right here we do our job right uh, here. i'm gonna i'm gonna say probably <laughs> probably warren buffett okay because uh i think he sucks mm. and i would really like to uh speak some truth to him about uh about bitcoin yeah because he's always out there we've got all these bitcoin haters right. that just spit stuff out well, there i think it's because they're, they're used to if we mess up the traditional exactly wheel, yeah so yeah it's, it's, it's like gas and electric cars yeah right. so I'm, I'm going with those two uh gotta go with tom brady Okay. Right. Like I, Tom Brady beat the Falcons. I was at that Super Bowl. It was horrible. Yes. Yeah, so I've got my own personal off. beef right. with, with Tom Brady, but there he's he, a winner, he's a, and he's into crypto. Mm -hmm. And you know the thing about it is, that guy is the biggest winner that exists that we know of. Right. Have like, you met him before? I've never met Tom Brady. Tom, hit up BitBoy. Yeah. Get in his DM right now. We got to fix that. Yeah, man. We right. got to make it happen. Come on the show <laughs> and, and, and talk. So got to go with Tom Brady, and then I would say probably. Uh, I'm gonna go to George Washington. Okay, he's dead. All right, but I, that threw me. That's the first time it hit the first time we've I, ever I, had I, I George say, Washington on I, tour. I, I gotta say because <laughs> when, when you look back in in leaders, mm -hmm. to me, like he is the quintessential. Like you had all your backs against the wall. Yeah, you should have lost. Yeah, and you pulled it through. Mm -hmm. I want to know how you did that. How did yeah. you take? Like, there's zero percent chance the United States should be the United States today. Right. Like. Britain was such a power. I know there's some controversial stuff right. about him. I just want to know from a leadership perspective, right. how did he take this ragtag group of, of people mm -hmm. and defeat like the most powerful country in the world at the time yeah. and establish that independence? And you can see that rebellious nature mm -hmm. in Americans. Yeah. The, the people around the world that look at us as Americans, you mm -hmm. know, they they think we're rebels mm -hmm. and, and American exceptionalism. Yeah. yeah, dang right. We feel like we're special, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I want to know, like, how he cultivated that, mm -hmm. use that to, to uh, you know, break free and, right. you know, try to bring people to financial freedom. Yeah, and energize a whole nation while yeah. doing it. He so that's the that's only person that comes to my mind that there I look at it from history. That is, yeah. That's a hell of a uh, tour, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take it, man. So uh, the controversy aside, George Washington, yeah, we get him in there. All right, <laughs> number three, what's your favorite wallet and why? Uh, I'm going to go with Coinbase Wallet. Okay. Now, this is different than the Coinbase app. So right. when people are going to download things, you understand the app and the wallet 
they have separate logos. Okay. I like the Coinbase wallet because it holds NFTs and mm. it displays them very easily. Mm -hmm. And it's such a natural step. When I'm thinking about what I like, mm -hmm. it's always a reflection of what I think my audience is gonna like. I understand. So when my audience is going to use a wallet, I need to make sure it's simple. They're gonna understand it. Yes. It's got good backing and it's safe. And the Coinbase wallet, as opposed to the Coinbase app, mm -hmm has that level one custody where okay. you own your private keys. And so it's really a, a good combination. MetaMask is another popular one, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you can look at MetaMask and say, well, you know, technically there's a lot of influence from JP Morgan mm -hmm. uh, in, in the Ethereum world yeah. uh, behind Consensus, which is the company that created MetaMask. Yeah. So a lot of people don't like that. Uh, it's not really popular these days. Right. It's, it's, it's like, going, getting less popular because of that controversy. Get it. It's like having the beef, the number one cattle rancher in the world uh, making all the vegan based food. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know if I trust this, uh, this uh, veggie burger. It's all right. scam. <laughs> <laughs> right, I got you. All right. Now, what was this is a two part question. I, I snuck in five y'all because it's you. All yeah. right. So what was the most ridiculous thing you purchased from by using your wallet? Okay. So most ridiculous thing I purchased. Uh, I mean, I got, I say a board ape NFT. Like mm. that's ridiculous. We spent yeah. at the time it was, <laughs> I think 38 ETH, mm. 38 Ethereum, which at the time was worth, you know, I think probably about $3,500 at the time. Yeah. Uh, at the peak, it was worth 130 ETH. Wow. So, uh, you know, just the fact that I bought this random picture uh, of this monkey that's right. got an eye patch on. That you really actually can yeah. never touch yes. physically. But you have it. Yeah. Right. Uh, actually, my CryptoPunk has an eye patch. My, uh, I call my board ape the mm. Easter Bunny. Because okay, it's, uh, like it's, it. it's an ape with Easter <laughs> uh, bunny ears. Uh, but one thing I'm doing is I'm, I'm building a house. And uh, in my basement, I've got my own little, like, you know, living room down there. Yeah. Uh, and they asked me, they're like, you know, you want to put a bunch of TVs down here so you can watch football? Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, well, yeah, but if I'm watching a football game, I'm just going to watch one game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like addition by subtraction when right. you're watching all the games at one time. Right. And if I'm going to do that, I'm just going to go to the direct TV channel that displays them all on the same screen. Right. So what we did is we're taking the TVs and we're turning them uh, vertical instead mm. of horizontal. Okay. I'm going to put all my big NFTs down there. Oh, so, no. Okay, nice, man. Yeah. I like that. All right, I like it. I like the purchase. You just gave me an idea, too. All right, so number four, one piece of advice you would give yourself at 18. It gets better. Mm. I, I think that that's something that young kids today can really relate to yeah. is, you know, Gen Z has grown up in the pandemic now. Mm -hmm. uh, the world has changed in a lot of ways. We're most likely, most people would say right now, either in a recession or heading towards a recession. Mm -hmm. um, but we all think that what we're going through at the time is the most dramatic thing. Right. Look back at when I was growing up, we had 9-11, mm -hmm. um, which changed a lot of stuff. We had the Iraq war going on. Yep. Uh, we had, and just think of the way that changed travel, TSA. Yeah. Um, you know, and then the housing crisis happened in 2008. When you're young, you tend to think it's all about you and that what you have going on right now is so important and you've got all these obstacles and hurdles. You don't know how you're going to overcome them. Yeah. And I think just it gets better mm -hmm. and it gets easier and you learn more and, and you take in your experience and that leads you to better experience of how to handle things better down the road. But I, I would also say probably the most important thing for me that I learned uh, going through rehab uh, it's 2007. I went to a place called No Longer Bound in um, Cumming, Georgia. Mm -hmm. I was there for two years. Mm. Uh, one year in the program, one year as an intern. And it, it was so intense. I didn't realize how jacked up I was. Mm. I didn't realize how much stuff it affected me as a kid, like parents getting divorced, mm -hmm. uh, having issues with my dad. I didn't see my dad for 10 years at some mm. point. I uh, got picked on in school. Like it was just one year out of all the years I went to school, but uh -huh. it was so horrible, you right. know? I didn't understand how much those things affected the way I was living my life. Mm. And it wasn't until I was able to take a pause in my life and go back and say, oh, I'm still thinking about this thing that happened 12 right. years ago. And it's affecting me. It, yeah. So I think also the other piece of advice would just be deal with your issues. Mm -hmm. You know, you're no good to anybody else. It's so cliche, you know, like you got to love yourself or you love somebody else. Right. But it's 100% true. It's real. Yeah, it's real. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right now, who you with? Reese. Reese. Who you with? Right now, who you with?